Today is a great, wonderful, amazing, incredible day because it's a Germany day. Growing up in Soviet Communist East Germany. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction. Let's go. In Eastern Germany, we were not allowed to watch Western TV. But we live... Wait, what? In Eastern Germany, she just said in East Germany, they weren't allowed to watch Western TV. That's crazy. Wow. It's still like that in some countries as well, isn't it? Some communist countries. In Eastern Germany, we were not allowed to watch Western TV. Wow. But we lived so close to the border to Western Germany, we were not able to get the GDR program. So we had to watch the Western program. Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. That's wild. Imagine being like, because obviously the ant antennas and like, being so close to that part of Germany. So they couldn't be indoctrinated by the communist way of thinking because they're on the border. That must be really difficult. <laughs> and uh, so we got an impression of the world in Western Europe. That's Pitt. She grew up in the GDR before the fall of the Berlin Wall. And this was her experience living in a country that no longer exists. Wow. Western Germany was like a fantasy world for us. We saw the advertising spots, so we were very happy when there were guests with us and brought soap or coffee from Western Germany. My grandfather had a cousin in Western Germany, and she once visited us. And I realized, oh, ordinary people. There's <laughs> nothing special people. about them. <laughs> in my life, I never knew anything else but the life in the GDR. We visited uh, Czech Republic. In 1978, uh, we spent our summer holidays in Poland. We only knew socialist countries. Wow. Very common was to swap things. You were able to buy something anywhere, which you don't need, but you know someone who needs it. So yeah. you can swap it, exchange it to something else. There was a lot and lot of exchange businesses. So um, you were always in contact with people. That's crazy. Imagine just living in a country where, you know, they, they have closed themselves off so much that it's down, down to the people to... Well, at least you have the freedom to actually go to other countries and actually trade stuff across the border. Like, there are some countries like Korea, North Korea, where that is... That's a no-go. You cannot get anywhere near, you can't smuggle anything in. Like, that is punishable. But at least it wasn't that bad, I guess. In the late 1980s, I realized there's something wrong. People disappeared. People were punished. People were pushed into, uh, put into prison without any reason. My boyfriend, he was at this time in Potsdam already. He was working in these uh, peace groups called Schwerte zu Flugscharen. It's taken from the Bible. And um, I had a patch on my jacket, Schwerte zu, uh, zu Flugscharen. And uh, once I was traveling the train to school, uh, there were two men sitting next to me. The people from the Secret Service, they had a very special way uh, of clothing. Gray and brown. And I knew they are secret service. Wow. And they asked, oh, for you it's good, Schwerter to Flugschaden. And I said, yes, I want to have a peaceful world. I don't want to have any Pershings. I don't want to have any uh, fight and war in the world. Can I just say that it must be impossible 
before before the fall of the Berlin Wall, things were so different that even though it was, it was you know, when was it, the, the 80s? It's not that long ago. It's not that long ago, the, the, the fall of the Berlin Wall. And there's so many people that are still alive. <laughs> like, a lot of people are still alive. So it's kind of like, there has, I, I just would love to know the real effects and what that time did to the people. Because there must be a split between the, in the country, in Germany. The, the, as, as, as much of you guys have come together, East Germany and West Germany, there's a, there's a split, there's a divide. There's a, there must be. What that does to the psyche to be under a, a certain regime. It's interesting, very, very interesting. Shortly afterwards, I got some information I'm not allowed to study. Um, so I realized there is something going on. Every medal has got two sides. On one hand, uh, it was a close community. We always try to help each other. And on the other hand, people watching you and reporting it to the Secret Service. And this uh, was a matter of your next steps in profession, how to get a flat, which school your children can go and stuff like this. So people in the community were reporting other people in the community for not doing things right. That's scary. I find that stuff scary. Like, imagine living in a society where, like, if you do something wrong, they report you to the authorities and you can get, like, punished for it. Like, to the extent of this, like, policing within the community, like, it's... I... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you feel. There's, there's an extent, there's, like... There's policing, you can, because in our communities in the UK, you have like neighborhood watch and you have policing with the com communities, but it's not to the extent in like communist countries where the government's like, you need to report this person if they're doing this small thing and we will punish them like really badly. Like it's, it's a different type of punishment. It's a different type of snitching. <laughs> As you say, snitching, sti snitches get stitches. Um, yeah, it sounds scary. There was a um, newspaper, the Bild Zeitung. They printed an article with all the names of people working for the Secret Service. And so many people discovered names of their neighbors. They realized, oh my goodness. I told him many things because I trusted him and me, uh, he may have given it to the Secret Service. Many people had to move away. At school, the students hear everything in GDR was bad. And I say, no, it wasn't. And I can say it because I'm a witness. I was there. We didn't suffer hunger. I uh, was able okay. to go to the kindergarten. I was able to go to school as well as my brother. My my parents did go to work. We heard in the news of the Western uh, news a lot of unemployment. We had no unemployment. Was... So she's saying that actually communism wasn't that bad because she said everyone was employed. Everyone got an education. Huh, interesting. My friends now, we have the opinion they were bad things, they were good things, and you can't see everything black and white. Let's keep the good things in this new world. Very interesting. She's basically saying that you could learn from both sides, actually. You can learn from a com a communist society and you can learn from a capitalist society you just know you know no there's no wrong and right answers there are some bad things really bad things about living in a communist society and there are really bad things about <laughs> we know there are really bad things about living in a capitalist society um 
especially as it pertains to people in lower classes. Interesting. So interesting. I wonder how that works in Germany, <laughs> in the East, and how they vote. Um, I wonder how the votes are split between your, your national parties and how the East votes versus the West. Do you know what I mean? So interesting. Mm. And I'm guessing the East is very, very conservative in their voting. And um, West Germany is very uh, the other way. <laughs> left. <laughs> very left in their uh, leaning. Let me know in the comment section how that works. Guys, thank you very much for watching. This was really interesting. Until the next one, I will see you very soon.